All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, quick video today. We're gonna react to Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad with his video. It's time for Christians to give up the Trinity. Exactly. This is what I've been saying all along. Guys, before we start the video, do me the favor, leave it a thumbs up if you like the content, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the merch in the description box. Yes, we have new merch. All right, guys, with no further ado, let's have a look. And there's a book called The Tyranny of Trinity, which is uh, a popular book amongst Unitarians who are fighting for a clearer view of, 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 of Tawheed amongst Christians. Uh, and there is also Anthony Buzzard's book, The Trinity, Christianity's Self-Inflicted Wound, which is a very good place to look for an internal Christian That's a very argument good title. Against, the, against the Trinity, and many other books like that. And you find that very often some of the most humane figures in Christian history have been people who have doubted the doctrine of Trinity. And Charles Dickens was perhaps the greatest conscience, moral conscience of Victorian England. He believed in God, but he rejected the Trinity. He went to a Unitarian church. Florence Nightingale would be another example. Um, and if you actually ask congregations, I was recently speaking to a, a church congregation, uh, and I sat around with them after the, the service was over, and we were talking about the issues that divide Christians and Muslims. And so I said, we don't believe in the Trinity and we don't believe in the Incarnation. We believe that we have a better relationship with Sayyidina Isa, Prophet Jesus, alayhi salam, if he isn't this puzzle that has a divine nature and a human nature, the infinite and the finite in one entity, we feel closer to him. And as a Muslim, I feel closer to him than I did when I was a believing Christian, which I used to be. Yes, absolutely. Islam clarifies and Islam makes it easy for us. Because let's be completely honest here. When I was a Christian, I tried to pray to God. Some days I would pray to God the Father directly. Then some other days I would pray to Jesus because that's what I've been told. Other times I would be thinking, should I invoke Mary now? Should I pray to a certain saint? What should I do? But let's leave it again at the Trinity. Just three personas, right? So you focus on three at once. You're focusing on the Father, on the Holy Spirit, on the Son. Ultimately your mind is scattered. With Islam you worship one God alone. So when you are praying, you're focusing on your prayer and you're directing it towards one God. It is very simple, it is very direct, and it restructures your mind. It puts you at ease. Moreover, I'm paraphrasing here, of course, I'm not an Islamic scholar, forgive me. However, within the Quran, it states that they never killed or crucified him. And moreover, the people who argue for the crucifixion, they are in doubt with no knowledge whatsoever. They're only making assumptions. And when I read that passage, it was so extremely powerful because ultimately it is true. Everybody that is debating for the crucifixion, for the resurrection, for the Trinity and whatnot, those people are in doubt. They do not truly know. They cannot know. If you look at the Shahada, the first part of the Shahada, La ilaha illallah, means that you are worshipping one God alone, right? That's it. And I have to laugh because it is so simple, it is so beautiful, it is so easy to understand once you look into it. However, if you look into the Nicene Creed, and this is what it means to be in Christian, what it means to be an Orthodox Christian, of course, you have to admit that you believe in the Father, in the Son, in the Holy Spirit, that you believe in the crucifixion and in the resurrection. All of this is needed, quote unquote, in order for you to be a Christian. But you cannot truly know. The crucifixion itself is a historical event. Maybe. We do not know if it happened or not. And nobody can travel back in time and be at the crucifixion and therefore say, yes, it is absolutely correct. I saw the crucifixion. I know that it is real and this is why I'm a Christian. No, it is just assumption like the Quran said. However, we all can know within our hearts, within our fitra, within our natural state, that God exists, that there is only one God worthy of worship. So therefore the Shahada is not a temporal historical claim here in comparison to Christianity, which is. And if you base your whole faith, your whole belief system upon history, you surely will be in doubt. And then I said, but you Christians, you believe in the Trinity and the Incarnation, we have to engage respectfully with that. And they said, oh, we don't believe in those things. We believe more or less in what you're saying. He was an inspired teacher, a great man of God, but we don't believe that he was God and that he was part of a Trinity and worshipped a Trinity. Every one of the people in that Anglican congregation basically took our position on that. And in 2002, um, there was a survey done of the opinions of uh, Anglican priests called the Cost of Conscience Survey. 
And they found that 78% of male Anglican priests believe in the doctrine of the Trinity. 70% of female Anglican priests believe in the doctrine of the Trinity. So a third or a quarter, even of the priestly leadership. Even if you go back to the Council of Nicaea, you will see that it was a majority decision. However, it is not as if all the church fathers agreed to the Trinity. No, it was like a democracy, basically. Some people voted for Trinity, some people voted against it. And in the end, they came to the conclusion that the dominant position wins here. However, even those people, they were guessing allegedly led by the Holy Spirit, but matter of fact, not one of them was there at the crucifixion or talked to Jesus. So therefore they were assuming some people said, yes, the Trinity is correct, and the others said it is not. In the end, they won by voting. Of that denomination doesn't believe in this crown of Christian theology. So and in the congregations you will find that very many people privately or publicly simply don't go along with it and regard it as something that makes worship very difficult, that takes God away from them, that problematizes Jesus yes. and isn't really monotheistic. So again, you can make a lot of headway with everybody except for the real headbangers, the hardline, militarized, uh, millennial Christians. Um, most of them, you can find that their hearts will be softened quite, quite quickly by that. All right, this is already it for today's short video. As he said, in the end, there most people, most Christians don't believe it anyways. And that is absolutely factual. Just the hardliners. Guess what? I explained this numerous times before. I come from the Balkan. My parents are from the Balkan. We are Orthodox Christians on the Balkan. This is what I've been told, right? But the point of the story is that the majority of people that I talk to, they do not know about the Trinity. They certainly do not worship Jesus as God. God. They have no idea. When you talk with people from the Balkan, they will tell you there's only one God and nobody's greater than God, which is ultimately the Islamic narrative. And they do not understand it. They do not know it. However, yet again, the hardliners, I got to know them later on. When I returned to my faith, when I returned to Orthodox Christianity, I started learning about it. I started studying it. And like that, I, of course, met many so-called hardliners. Like that, I met many people that were very, very invested in Orthodox Christianity and took the whole bundle. They took the Trinity as their identity almost. Those people worship the Trinitarian God, whatever that means. Every single time I would ask them, nobody could give me an answer. However, yet again, the majority of Christians does not believe in the Trinity. This just shows us that it is a forced upon belief. Most people that I discussed with, most Christians, when I told them about the Trinity, they shut down. They didn't even want to talk about it with me. When I then proceeded to tell them that Islam is the only religion that is purely monotheistic and does not worship a Trinity, etc., etc., on paper, it all made sense for them. But yet again, they wanted to shut me down because it would bring break their ego. They simply couldn't believe that their religion was teaching them falsehood. And intuitively, they knew it was falsehood. I told you the story before. I spoke with my father about the Trinity. I told him, hey, there is a father, there is a son, there is a Holy Spirit. And he told me that this is the craziest thing that he has ever heard in his life. And if this is really what Muslims believe, then no wonder. And I looked at him and told him, no. This is not what the Muslims believe. This is what we are supposed to believe. And he was shocked. We never talked about religion, but he was shocked. He couldn't believe it. And even days after that, he started studying on his phone about the Trinity. And he told me, this is nonsense. This is crazy. How can they believe it? And I said again, dead. This is exactly what I'm talking about. How should we believe this? This is not intuitively right and this is not correct. We know this to be false. However, yet again, unfortunately, the discussion ended there. Islam is for the Muslims. Christianity is for us. This is it. Even though intuitively he agreed with the concept of Tawhid and disagreed with the Trinity. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. Yet again, another Trinitarian video. I actually didn't want to make another one, but I really like Sheikh Abdal Hakim Murad over here, and I believe he voiced it correctly and beautifully. All right, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And yet again, check out the merch. We have new t-shirts, hoodies, long sleeve, even stickers in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.